I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. So the first film of 2020, a new decade, and it's The Grudge 4. I know they say it's a reboot of The Grudge, but other places say it's technically a sequel. It's a reboot in the vein that they wanted this to be successful and make multiple movies after it, but it's pretty much The Grudge 4. I'm the wrong guy to talk about because I'm not a fan of any of the Grudge films. I don't know why I saw this. Maybe because you, know, you just want to take my mind off stuff. You know, stuff going on in the real world. Maybe because to use this as the perpetual punching bag. <laughs> Healthy way of letting out the rage since this one's talked about the fucking rage curse. My rage is more fucking rage filled than anything in this fucking flick directed by some guy named Pesce don't know what the hell he's done I looked it up didn't recognize like a couple independent movies this movie's fucking boring it's deathly dull and badly paced it took some good actors and wasted them in nothing roles. You got John Cho, who I loved in the film Searching. My, you know, my favorite film of that year. I loved Searching. Tremendously underrated. Got nothing accolades wise. And the best thing John Cho could get was a fucking grudge film. Grudge 4. That's what I'm just called. The Grudge 4. Because I'm tired of this bullshit where it's a sequel, but we're going to call it the same fucking title. Granted, can't make, can't get too mad because <laughs> I did. I, the other Grudge films, I think another reason I wanted to do this is so my friend Michael Keane, the choice voice, wouldn't be alone. Does he reviewed a couple films, including this? One of my dear friends on here. Really, of those Japanese horror films, and then they did remakes, especially in the two thousands. You had Dark Water and The Rain and The Eye. The only one I liked was the remake of The Rain with Naomi Watts, the first one, not the sequel. The, the first one, though, I liked Gore Verbinski's direction and the look of the film. And I kind of got interested in the mystery and how it related to images on the tape. Uh, I think really they should have just ended it definitive in that one, not leave it room for a fucking sequel. That's just my opinion. But overall, The Grudge, though, I know there's the Japanese one, which got quite a few sequels, including a Rain vs. Grudge movie. Yes, there is, I forget what it's called, but it's it's the Rain vs. The Grudge chicks. Mud wrestling. <laughs> Might as well be, I don't know, not really, but it is the two of them fighting. So, my friend Michael, you can watch that if you want. And then in America, you had The Grudge with Sarah Michelle Gellar and Bill Pullman was in it. Then the sequel, which Sarah Michelle Gellar was in it for a bit part and then died. Oh, spoiler. Everyone fucking dies in these movies. So it can't be spoilers. And that's the theme with movies like this. You know how it's going to end. So where's the suspense? Where's the, the stares? Where's the fear when you know how it's going to end because they've made it predictable that everyone's going to die and everyone's fucked 
when it's that predictable, I, de I don't see where the suspense or fear can come from. And even then, if you're a fan of the old grudge films, the, the girl from that, there was a Kayako, Kayako, the, the female with the weird look and the lawn hair. She's, it's, it's in the film, except like seven seconds at the beginning, you see it's arm or something. So even if you're a fan of the grudge, I don't know if you would like this because the villain is not even in it because the story, again, it's supposedly a sequel. That's what it says online. They just how I get these sequels, but yet this called say Halloween. It's a Halloween sequel, but we're gonna call it Halloween. Fucking lazy. Some girls in America, she gets grabbed. That's also the only time you see that little Asian kid that opens his mouth and you hear the the stupid cat sound, which I always thought was stupid in the older films. I always thought that was ridiculous and funny. Like he opens his mouth and you're meow, meow. I'm like, I'm not scared of the noise of a cat coming from an Asian kid. Meow. It just makes me laugh. I thought it was utterly ridiculous. So maybe it's not bad that that's not in it. But at the same time, then why make a grudge film in the first place? There are a hundred fucking ghost story movies that does similar shit to this. And did anyone even want a sequel, let alone a reboot of the grudge? Was there anyone really raising their fucking hand? So then I'm like, what a waste of fucking time and what a waste of money. All these scripts I'm sure are good, people could make, and they get tossed to the side, but let's put it into a fucking movie that no one wanted and no one gave a shit about. Another grudge film. And even if you're a fan of those, and you like those villains, they're not even in this. Except like, again, maybe 10 seconds, both of them at the beginning? Because she gets grabbed, but then she goes home. We find out later she's killed her husband and her little girl. And then the movie does this whole thing where it's non-chronological. Where this part is the 2006, then this part is 2004, then this part is like in the middle, then this part's back to 2006 again, then this part's in the middle again, then this part's 2004. Some of the older films did that, I understand, being non-chronological. I did not care for the shifting timelines. Because you didn't invest... If even if you try to invest it, then you're in this, then you're in this, then you're in this, then you're in this, then you're in this. And there are movies that can do that well. Pulp Fiction, for example. Pulp Fiction had a great script, director, and cast. This has, this doesn't. The cast, John Cho, Lin Shay, William Sadler is in it, Frankie Faison, who I remember from some of the Hannibal Lecter movies as Barney, the hospital orderly orderly he was also in this film called highwaymen with jim caviezel but they're wasted in nothing parts that anybody could have played this director doing independent films i've never fucking heard of i die well shit floats up so maybe he won't get jobs and it's just so boring deathly paced and badly uh terribly dull i mean it it goes to show you when cinema store for those who don't know cinema store is apparently when movie theater patrons they come out they get pulled they give it a grading from a to f very very rarely do films get an f this guy an f now granted this is not one of the worst films of all time but it's a shitty year to start and <laughs> A shitty way to start 2020, a new decade. And this was the only film to come out the first week of the year. And, and story? What fucking story? There's a female cop and her kid. Cop finds bodies. She has a partner who fucking mumbles all of his dialogues. You can't understand what the hell he's saying. Needed subtitles on the motherfucker. What? What? Did you get the dick out of your mouth, maybe? Articulate? 
Is it the mustache getting in the way of your words? Shave the mustache. I don't care what the fuck it is. Do something. And he didn't go in the house, but sh uh, she did. So apparently with the grudge curse, when you enter the house that's cursed, you get infected like an STD. So she starts seeing weird things and I'll cut to... Oh, back in 2004, John Cho, who was a realtor trying to sell that house. He has a wife and she's pregnant. And the kid, doctors say when he pops out, he's going to have some, I forget what it's exactly called. A uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but the, the kid will be affected with something. And the husband and wife, I guess, are trying to deal with it. But you barely have any scenes with them really getting into any deep thoughts on the subject matter. John Cho went into the house because he he's seen things. They even steal the fucking scene from the... And I barely remember the Grudge films. Because again, they just were not my cup of tea. I do remember Sam Michelle Geller. Remember the sequence? If not, just watch the trailer. It's in there too. She's taking a shower and then a hand comes out of her head. It's like, huh. they steal the exact same scene, except it's John Cho in the shower. He's washing his hair, hands come out, huh. the exact same thing. Talk about laziness. And this gets funded. And people got paid to do this. Even as a man who's not a fan of those movies, I could say that's fucking lazy as shit. John Cho, I keep harping on this. This is a guy who did a film I loved called Searching. Incredibly underrated. Got zero accolades. Nothing. And the best he could get was this. That fucking sucks. And even then, it's funny how some of the marketing... Play him off as if he has a bigger role than he has. Because you could probably count on two hands how many scenes he has. And his, and they, when they take each of these things, they sprinkle them out, like I said, non-chronological. So it's shifting timelines. It's almost as if you took your anthology, you cut it to pieces with the scissors, and then you do a, a jumble mess in your Windows video editor and then hit play. People just say, well, they did that in the previous films. Again, one of the many reasons that I didn't care for those. From what I heard, The Grudge 3 didn't do that. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, but it probably ends the same way as all of these. Although I wonder how the Reen and the Grudge Lady, <laughs> well, that versus movie ends. Did they both cancel each other out? And then John Cho, like his story, he sees his little girl who we can figure out is the curse and little girl that was murdered in the house. Some of the stuff in this is so stupid too. He goes to the house trying to find the people because the, the sell it, things of that nature. Sees a little girl, sees there's no, there's no parents, no mom, no dad. She gets a nosebleed. He stays there. Why he doesn't call a cop? Or any or a doctor at least? Hospital if she's bleeding, nose bleeding like that, and there's no one around. Anybody. She he calls no one. He just stays there. Why? I understand you think the kid, you don't want to leave a kid alone, but fucking call someone, man. At least call a police officer. Like, hey, they left their kid home. That'd be responsible. <laughs> you don't leave your little girl home alone who also has nosebleeds. One thing leads to another. There's a moment where he goes upstairs. Go, he going to enter a room he doesn't he gets attacked most of these attacks are off screen even though this is rated r 
I mean, it's rated R, but not for much. I mean, a couple of rotting bodies. There's one body that falls, and when it hits, it goes splat. There's one where you see fingers getting cut off. Very tame R rating, I would say. And then he goes home and kills his pregnant wife and drowns himself in the bathtub. <clears throat> the one story, Lin Shay and Frankie Faison are a couple. They're an old couple. Frankie Faison has hired this lady who's an assisted suicide lady. Do those come in the phone book or something? Like, how the fuck do you find those? Under Cavortian? Uh, yeah, did he put a Craigslist ad for it? And the lady who played that is terrible. Uh, for some reason, she seemed like the type of person that would try to sell me on how good this pastor is to make me give donations to his parish on some TV program. And that her real name should be like Tammy Faye or something. But the the lady who's trying to assist, she's fucking terrible. Easily the worst performance in the movie. Lynn Shea, for your phase on, I liked his attitude, but they had given nothing to do. Lynn Shea is just crazed. So the assistant suicide lady is like, well, I can't do it because she's not in her frame of mind. Of course, you could make the argument if you're going to have assisted suicide in the first place, would you really be in your frame of mind? But that's another argument. Freddy Faison, I don't know why he wants to kill his lady, his wife. I understand she's trouble, but put her in a fucking nursing home or something. Take her to the fucking beach. I don't know. Long story short of that. The assisted suicide lady, I don't remember her name, walks in the kitchen. She sees Frankie Faison dead. Lynn Shea is cursed. How they got infected with the curse, I, I completely forgot how. I think they moved into the house that the when the lady came back from Japan and killed. I think the gold couple moved to the house and the realtor... John Cho was the guy trying to sell the house. Lin Shay cuts her fingers off and turns around. Ah, you stupid jump steers. Tammy Faye, whatever the fuck her name, the assisted suicide lady gets in a car. Ah, gets in a car accident, dies. <laughs> William Sadler, great actor, wasted. He's a cop that has, I don't know, Count on one, one hand how many scenes. He knows something's going on. There's a moment he's outside watching Lin Shea and Freddy Faison's house. There's a moment where he's with the, the female cop, her, her partner, Mr. Mumbles. Mr. Mumbles is talking with William Sadler. William Sadler just pulls his gun out, tries to shoot himself in the car. Failed. Then our lead, who disappears for good chunks of the movie, it seems... Because of this way, this non-chronological bullshit. She comes back, tossed to William Sadler in the asylum. William Sadler looks like Arseface from the Preacher comics. Pretty much going, pretty much giving her exposition about the legend and how he afraid of seeing her and he should gouge his eyes out. Which, when the cop does, he does gouge his eyes out. Speaking of Lin Shay, what happens with her? She gets put in an asylum. And again, how stupid this movie is. This is a girl who cut her fingers off, killed her husband. But she's literally going around in a wheelchair with no supervision. And to the point that the doctors and nurses are literally going, Hi there. Hey there, how you doing? How you doing, Mrs. Ba-Ba-Ba, Mrs. Lin Shay? How you doing? 
This is a girl. This is a woman that literally murdered her husband and cut her own fingers off. She's wheeling around in a wheelchair with no supervision. No one stopping her. No one watching her. Just lolly daddy and free willing. Why? I have no fucking idea. Apparently, if you murder your husband, cut your fingers off, they'll just give you a wheelchair. You can go wherever the fuck you want in a hospital. And literally the doctors and nurses will say, hey, how's it going? And then she gets on the stairs, sees the, the little girl ghost. Because again, the, the Asian lady and the little boy Asian with the mouth open. Meow. They're not in the movie. It's a 10 seconds at the beginning. So all you see are maybe ghosts of the little girl and the... The woman that killed her husband and little girl. Lynn Shea sees a little girl, jumps off, lands, and you get an explosion of blood. Doesn't impress me. And then the ending of the film, the female cop, after getting an exposition and a couple of cheap, lame jump steers, goes to the house with her kid. I don't know why she took her kid. You would think, I don't know, why don't you leave the kid with your buddy, your partner, the cop, who has not been in the house and is not affected. Why don't you leave your kid with him? Because. <laughs> because. And then. She burns the house down. Of course, the kid walks in. Which is the woman's fault. Because you should have not brought your fucking kid with you to the cursed house that you don't burn down. Leave me a fucking McDonald's for all I tear and get a fucking happy meal and tell him to shut up. And then she burns the house down and then this ending was a bit confusing to me they moved to another place I think it's the same place that John Cho lived at I believe I could be wrong which you would think she would know because she looked at John Cho's portfolio you know his you know after it was part of the records because he was one of the victims so you would think she would know that but if not, okay, I don't, she, anyway, she goes to this house, she hugs her kid, and then we see another kid go by, so it's not her kid, and then she dies and gets pulled away, but okay, why the fuck didn't she know that was John Cho says, why are the ghosts only the girl and her daughter, what about the husband who died, he can't be a ghost, are they sexist now, guys can't be ghosts, SJW ghosts now? They can't be fucking... Well, guys can't be ghosts. Only girls have to be ghosts. Well, there's a little boy in the fucking older ones. But I guess here, the, the guy... Like, John Cho can't be a ghost. The, the husband can't be a ghost. I didn't mean for it to go on this long 27 minutes, but fuck it. This movie sucks. It's boring. It's dull. It's... No lack of steers, lack of imagination, lack of wit. I mean, the films weren't really about wit, but could have been something different to bring to the table. It does nothing new with this subject matter. If you've seen any of these ghost story movies, especially inspired by the Japanese ghost stories, like in Japanese horror films back in the day. It does nothing original, intriguing, unique, uh, not scary, not suspenseful, no action, uh, not much for gore. John Cho's very much wasted, as well as William Sadler, Frankie Faison, Lin Shay, on nothing parts. This movie can suck my fucking dick. And yeah, I can hold a grudge to it. This is a shitty way to start 2020. Shitty fucking way. 
Oh, it's January. Bullshit. Tremors in 1990 came out in January. So did Deep Rising. And I think The Relic came out in January. Uh, Metro with Eddie Murphy. Rambo 4. I've seen quite a few films that came out in January that were pretty de damn good. Not just decent, good. No excuse. So. Fuck the bitch. Fuck the grudge bitches. Two grudges, one cup. Is that going to be the next one? Might as fucking well be. Later. <laughs>